<laughs> CJ's making me laugh. So, um, this is a special article, guys. Can I tell you why? Because yep. this is our second article that has been suggested by a listener. Woohoo! Oh, I like this. The yeah. last one was awesome. Mm. It's got it a lot to live so up good. to. It's so good, yeah. Mm. Now, is it a different person this time? Yes, except so they haven't. They so haven't. Eighty percent of our listeners now. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Fifty percent. <laughs> they haven't um, done like a recording like my friend Hazel, but they just suggested. Ugh. They have suggested <laughs> that this would be a good a article job. to talk about. So I think we should um, allow that listener, give that li listener the luxury of us talking about it. Yeah. Okay. Name. So, Who's this name? Name What's drop. His name? Robbie. 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 <laughs> That's it? Robbie. That's an Australian name. Robbie, <laughs> I do not know you, but I'm about to judge you very hard based off of this article. Okay. Is Robbie Ready? a tradie? Yes, he is a tradie. Oh, there you with, go. A, with a name like Robbie, he has to be a tradie. He can't, he can't be a doctor. Dr. Robbie. Well, so gonna, I mean... Uh, would you trust <laughs> Dr. Robbie giving you an appendix operation? It would be Dr. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think I'd trust Dr. Robbie. Yeah. No, you wouldn't. You're just saying that to be politically it, correct. It, it could be a builder. Dr. Robbie sounds like an idiot. <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> I, what's wrong with the name Robbie? Robbie. Nothing's wrong with the name Robbie. Mm, I'm saying a doctor being called Robbie. <laughs> Is Robbie going like to listen to this? Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Robbie. Uh, yeah. I'll talk to you soon, mate. <laughs> Has he got kids? <laughs> no. Are you going to show Hey, kids, look. <laughs> Dad's on the podcast. Let's have a listen. Okay. So Rock is not a very... <laughs> he suggested that we talk about D.B. Cooper. D.B. Cooper. Know who D.B. Cooper is? D.B. Cooper. Shh. I'm familiar. I'm well, not an expert, but I'm familiar. I wasn't familiar, <laughs> but I am now. So, D.B. Cooper, here is his story. I'm going to start with what happened and then progress into why, he, why it is a story, okay? On the afternoon of November 24th, Christmas Eve, 1971, a nondescript man who goes by the name Dan Cooper approached an they airline... <laughs> it's an, uh, not him. This is 71. Approached the counter of a Northwest Orient Airlines in Portland, Oregon. He purchased with $20 cash a one way ticket on flight number 305 to Seattle, Washington. Okay. Cooper. Quiet man. Appeared to be in his mid 40s. He wore a business suit. Brown shoes, black tie, overcoat with a dark briefcase and a brown paper bag. He ordered, once he got on the plane, a bourbon and soda whilst he was waiting for the flight to take off. Shortly after about 3pm, he handed the stewardess a note. Now, the stewardess initially put it straight in her pocket and then he had to say, oh no, no, you might want to read that. <laughs> So she takes out the, the note, reads it, and it indicates that he has a bomb in his briefcase and he wanted her to sit down next to him. Just, Are you sure he's not a pimpy guy <clears throat> trying was, to pick up the stewardess? That was a bit funny, though, that he hands her the note indiscreetly and then she's like, oh, yeah, thank you. All right, I put it in my pocket. I'll be on my way. And he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Read the note. <laughs> anyway. Why not just tell her? <laughs> so, because he was trying to be discreet. So, what happens if the stewardess is illiterate? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. So, <laughs> she sits down <laughs> and then he showed her, um, a, like a, a glimpse of his bomb. And so, she just sees like, uh, like loads of wires, red colored sticks, and and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking a Looney Tunes it like a cartoon. <laughs> no. and he demanded that she write down what he told her so he wanted four parachutes and two hundred thousand dollars but they had to be in twenty dollar bills in a backpack okay so was he on the plane at this point yes does the he know something about the, the stewardess that we don't like does she happen to have this money 
No, the plane is in the air. So she has to then go tell the pilot, okay, we're kind of being hijacked. Uh, this is his demands. So the flight lands in Seattle and D.B. Cooper exchanges the passengers for the parachutes and the money. And he had all stupid. And he had also requested that they have a big fuel tanker on site so they could f- uh, refuel the plane. The plane. He orders the plane to take off again. So the plane takes off, bound for Mexico City. But he made them flow fly below ten thousand feet. Sometime during that flight, he then puts on some black sunnies. So if you look up uh, one of the famous photos of D.B. Cooper, you'll see he's wearing, there's one without and one with black sunnies. And he took off his clip-on tie. Don't know why he took it off, but he he decided he didn't need it. Took it off, left it on the plane. And somewhere between Seattle and Reno, could be Reno, Reno. Reno. So about a little after 8 p.m. now, he jumped out the back of the plane, out of a rear door. Who could have guessed he was going to do that with his parachutes? <laughs> <laughs> However, they actually didn't know he'd jumped until they landed and he wasn't there, which is strange. But he jumped. Um, pilots landed safely, but Cooper disappeared into the night. And until this day, he has never been seen again. Now, this is why it's a big story. Because the FBI opened up an investigation, which is called Norjac. The, this investigation lasted over 45 years and was actually only just closed in 2016. Although it remains, they if they find any new evidence, they're able to still close the case. Uh, close the case. Or if the guy's still alive, charge him. Mm. But in the year after the hijacking, loads and loads and loads and loads of letters started pouring in people saying oh it was me or oh it was my brother or oh it was i know that person or whatever and they had about 800 suspects why but were they people did... trying to dob in their family and friends because they because it was this sort of big big thing that had happened yes and... still i wouldn't want to snitch on anyone i know was there a reward I don't know if there was a reward. It didn't mention a reward. But but basically by five years after this this hijacking and into the investigation, yeah, they'd gone from eight hundred suspects down to two dozen. Um <clears throat> one of the main so what we're gonna do now, is there any questions? Oh, from from us or mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh. I mean <laughs> Should we should we try it? <laughs> should we try doing it? The hijacking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my my assumption was if he if it worked, then maybe a lot of people have tried it since. And also, why did you give him a working parachute? Yeah. So this is a that's a good question, and that's why maybe that's why he asked for four. Suspect he thinking... requested four. Yeah, because yeah. he was think because then they didn't know whether he'd keep suspects on board, so they wouldn't tamper with any, for example. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Clever. That's pretty clever. So I'll go through a list of some of the, the suspects coops. that they think it could be. And one of the most um, convincing okay, suspects... Okay, quick question. Don't they, just, don't they have his name? Daniel Cooper? That's just a name he gave wouldn't, them. Wouldn't, he, wouldn't that guy be the first suspect? No, nah, it's just a made-up <laughs> name he gave them. What's interesting about that name, by the way, is Dan Cooper... And you know how he goes by D.B. Cooper? That's just a mistake. It's actually Dan. On the actual ticket, he wrote Dan. But some say there was a mix-up with the airline ticket or something and it came out as D.B. And some say it was a reporter that accidentally said D.B. and it's just stuck. But his name's Dan. There was a... In the war, there was a comic book that the veterans used to read and the main character was Dan Cooper. Keep that in mind. Um, so, suspect number one. One of the most... Mind kept. One of the most are you about, are you about to go through all 24 suspects here? <laughs> no, just just right. a handful. Richard Floyd McCoy, still a favorite. He actually committed the same hijacking within five months of the original. So did the exact same thing. So it was in 1972. He requested four parachutes, jumped out both, uh, ba- jumped out the back of the plane. 
And on his note, both his note and the original Dan Cooper note said, no funny stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, st- I'm starting to think it could be that guy. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not the exact same guy a few months later. So but... you look the same as well. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, um, I, I, I don't need to go to um, detective school to figure out that there's a link. <laughs> I'm also wait. No. I've just I've just clocked on as well. You didn't you say there's a picture of Dan Cooper in his sunglasses? So don't that's they know what from, he looks like? <laughs> no, that's from <laughs> drawing, that's from eh? the stewardesses' drawings. There was two main stewardesses that had spent quite a lot a lot of time with him, and they both produced similar <laughs> or described similar. You know, they produced similar drawings from their descriptions. Just for curiosity, that's the first suspect. Look like the drawings? So, (laughs) McCoy was later ruled out because he didn't match the nearly identical physical descriptions of Cooper provided by the flight attendants. However, brackets, they did say that he did look fairly similar. But anyway, (laughs) he was ruled out also because he was having dinner with his family. He was having having Thanksgiving dinner with his family. So, So, a guy that commits the exact same crime a few months later right has his family give him a alibi alibi Alibi, and they fall for it i mean possibly well mccoy actually ended up being sentenced to that um hijacking the the one that he did five months later and was sentenced to 45 years in prison but he escaped and then he died in a gun battle between fbi agents and so that was him what a cool life he's had (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a story I yeah that guy was I like know. jumping okay. out of planes next robbing bang. suspect yeah Dwayne Webber Da-dum. he claimed to be D.B. Cooper on his deathbed to his wife Joe. so he said maybe he had dementia he said I have a secret to tell you I'm Dan Cooper and Joe began thinking about it and then she saw some similarities or made some links to stuff that, that, you know, that she'd saw in this, her husband. So he used to have nightmares um, a lot. He had a knee problem, which he said he got jumping out of a plane. And he had an old Nor- Northwest Airlines ticket. And apparently he looks a bit, he looks like him. And he did have a criminal background issue at some point too. So he, was the name on the ticket Dan Cooper? Don't know. But he did have an old ticket. <laughs> he had a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't look at is, any of the uh, details on it. <laughs> I've got a ticket too, right? So does that mean I'm him? But then why would you say on your deathbed as you're about to die? Because then he died. Like, why would you say you have I'm dementia. Dan Cooper? He has dementia, the poor bugger. Uh, I mean, to uh, be fair, uh, uh, joke. Yeah, say on your deathbed, you can say what, what you want, can't you? It doesn't to your matter. wife? But why yeah. would you say that? You might that? have not liked her very much. Mm. <laughs> it is interesting, isn't it, that? So he's another, mm. he's another sort of, you know, up there suspect. Next suspect is Kenneth Christiansen. So Kenneth's brother, Lyle, was so convinced that Kenneth was the hijacker after seeing an episode about D.B. Cooper... So, and apparently Kenneth said to Lyle on his deathbed that there's, there's something I should tell you. <laughs> Another guy. But I can't. Okay. This guy is just messing with his brother. No, he didn't say. He goes, Because if I had a I brother who you, thought I was D.B. Cooper on my deathbed, I'm a fuck with him. And then <laughs> he died. So there was some, he, he, Lyle knew there was something Kenneth needed to tell him, but he couldn't. And then a flight attendant said that from all the suspects, this Kenneth seemed to look the most like D.B. Cooper. But they ruled him out. But that Kenneth guy was a paratrooper after the war. So he was an experienced, you know, he he knew how to jump out of planes um, and use um, parachutes. Because can I say, by the way, the parachute that they gave him, one of them didn't actually open and because it was sewed closed and another one there was no there was no steering mechanism so he couldn't steer and it was pitch black one. it was pitch black at night it was a, there was a rain rainstorm 
and he was over a woodland area. Uh, has so, this story just been added on over time? Yeah, like, has there yeah. been, like, 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 was it a no, clear day? A, no, there's an ac- account <laughs> from FBI when it actually happened, so they would have said whatsoever, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But, but you know, I, I'm thinking he would have checked the parachutes before he put them on. Well, this is, so this is what they're, what they're thinking. Well, 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 he would have checked the parachutes. parachutes. Yeah. Yeah. So they think even the most trained, like, paratroopers and stuff say, I would never make that jump in a million years, even if you paid me, because it's so dangerous um, in under the conditions that it was in. Um, but so would they hijack like, a plane he? in a million years either? Because well, if not, right? then so they're not was... the type of people we should be asking. Exactly. So was he military? Was he, was he experienced and had nothing to lose? Was he not experienced and just had nothing to lose? Don't know. So well, can I just say, by the way, with him, my favorite <laughs> part is because I'm looking at all these people. I'm looking up all these people to compare the pictures next to the oh, Stephen yeah. Cooper, and there's this like article, like picture with caption, where they're trying to suggest it was him because of the tie that he's wearing, and it's just <laughs> two ties. <laughs> like- oh no! I'll come to the tie. I'll come to the tie. There's a thing about the tie. So, um. I fi- I still think it's the first guy because he did the exact same crime a few months later. <laughs> so I think that is very, very important. <laughs> that is a very important piece of information. So uh, in 1980, some years after the, the hijacking, an act- a kid um, found a, a load of $20 bills and they had the same serial numbers as the bills that D.B. Cooper was supposedly given. Um, but they were like half of them are moldy or whatever, but they tested them. They reckon that as he jumped out, one of the bags has fallen into a river and just, you know, gone downstream. But they didn't find the rest and that sort of led them nowhere, which sucks. But um, the investigation went on and on and on, 45 years, as I said, close it in 2016. But new evidence has since been released. Um, apparently some FBI documents have been leaked. And w- here is another suspect that has since shown up robert rackstraw look that one up sans so people believe he is the actual dan cooper he knew how to construct weapons he knew how to jump out of planes uh when people asked him are you db cooper he said could have been he had been (laughs) these guys are so cool (laughs) i've never met a bunch of cooler blokes honestly (laughs) thanks to my accents (laughs) um He'd been kicked out of the army a month before the hijacking. Um, he had a criminal history, uh, which he was acquitted for, though. Um, they <laughs> so he didn't have a criminal history. Well, criminal he could have done it. They could have. He got was it innocent. Wrong. Um, they <laughs> apparently they they didn't release these records on this particular Robert Rackstraw earlier because they reckon he was possibly an undercover agent, and they didn't want the uh, bureau to be embarrassed. Um, so he has since come up as a possible, most likely suspect. However, there is another one. This is the final one. 18 minute warning. <laughs> Joe Lakich. <laughs> Joe Lakich is a deceased army veteran from Nashville. He was angry, furious at the FBI. And he blamed them for murdering his daughter, Susan Giff. Now, she, Susan, was kidnapped by her ex-husband and the ex-husband ordered, uh, took her to a, 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 what do you call, like a plane area, what are they called? And ordered airport? a, a, well, yeah, but like a private one. Landing strip. A private, private airport? Like a, private airport? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, he ordered a pilot. Oh, that word's evading my mind. Um, he ordered a pilot, a pilot <laughs> a plane to driver. <laughs> plane driver to fly to the Bahamas, right? Now, the, the FBI were contacted as this was happening and they shot out the plane's tires for some unknown strange reason. Awful <laughs> decision making. So because they did that, the ex-husband killed Susan, killed the pilot and then killed himself. So Joe Lakich, uh, Lakich publicly blamed the FBI. Um, and he also served as an infantry soldier in World War II. He, and his specialization was planning missions. Um, 
And this is the crux, which is which what I said about the tie. The tie, they tested for evidence and they found some DNA. But besides the DNA, they also found very rare elements, which your average Joe would not have access to for it to be able to settle on your clothing. Um, these elements included titanium. Now, um, this particular Joe Lakich worked as a production supervisor in an electronics, big electronics thingy company where they used titanium. So okay. they're saying it had to be a very specific type of person in a very specific type of job to have So what you're saying is anyone working in the electrical industry that was former military or could jump out of a plane <laughs> or had used these kind of electrical cables... <laughs> which were tiny, which were titanium, could be a suspect. Yeah. So I'm still holding the first one. So <laughs> that's where we're at. Still, this is the longest running FBI investigation. Well, it's just been closed, hasn't it, in 2016? But it still could be opened again. Um, but it's the longest. It was the longest running FBI investigation in history. And to this day, DB Cooper is still unknown. Some believe it's a myth. But there's too many records for that to be, for it to be a myth. But um, it's a fascinating story. There's loads of documentaries on YouTube, and I sort of was going down the rabbit hole a bit with them. But thank you, Robbie, well, we for bringing tell. that to our attention. Mm-hmm. How did this is my thing? Is I don't know because I don't I don't know how Emma you didn't know about this before this. Um, now I don't know who else here has watched Prison Break, but this is like the main story in the first season when they're escaping the prison is to go and get db cooper's money because db cooper is in the prison i don't remember i don't remember and i've watched every episode of prison break but it was so long I'm ago have to now watch it again just oh, so yeah. I, I i didn't watch it he so was he was supposed to escape with them so he could go get his buried money that he'd buried somewhere after jumping out of the plane but he oh. dies <laughs> during like he's too old and gets hurt and he's like oh, i'm not gonna make it like you go and get the money as they're escaping oh. and then they leave and then they start fighting each other trying to find like that after they leave the prison all they're doing is trying to find the money like that is that it's the ho- such an important oh, part of the story money? i don't understand how you forgot that i just don't know what do you remember and about the guy lost his hand? the FBI's investigation skills? No, T-Bag lost his hand when they were on the way yeah. trying to find the money. That's what I mean. He T-bag. was he was the one that turned against him, right? To yes. try and get the money himself. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that Who T-bag. names a person T-Bag? <laughs> we're in prison. He T-Bags everyone, I guess. <laughs> hey, now, T-Bag does thing, look though? like the guy that I was... Does T-Bag mean anything to you, Dev? What? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes. It's probably the exact same thing that it's meant for you guys. I say, I think, uh, yeah, I, used to... I think Halo <laughs> and all that kind of made that global, didn't they? Were you gonna... Halo? Yeah, you remember the old, uh, oh, Halo? Oh, because you were just squatting. Yeah. yeah I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, um, what else happened on um, Prison Break? <laughs> well, you were talking about T-Bag and he reminds me just like that, uh, just of, of that guy that we were talking about last week or the week before, who wears the kids' faces on his on his head and rides the rocket. Do you remember? <laughs> wears the kids' faces on his head and rides the rockets. I remember. No, we were we just talking but... about him. Yeah, that was you mixing up Armageddon and another bloody scary. Yeah, movie. the guy from Armageddon <laughs> and the other one. That yeah, T-Bag reminds you, and him. you joined two scary movies and put them together. <laughs> And made yourself a new one. Yeah. Which doesn't exist. Hmm. <laughs> he says, leaving on a jet plane. Did, did the guy from Prison Break look like um, the picture? What do you mean? D.B. Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. Um, oh. That's a good question. It's gonna have to Steve be a, Buscemi. Because uh, imagine it's actually him. Project. Ima- imagine the guy playing D.B. Cooper in Prison Break is actually the real <laughs> D.B. Cooper. Because, yeah... <laughs> And he and the reason why he stole the money because he wanted to do acting classes. I wonder why there's so much intrigue over this bloke. Oh, he kind of does a little bit. Charles Westmoreland, except he's just older. I wonder why there's so much intrigue over this guy. Because he got away. I know, but it's not even an elaborate plan. Like, 
It's not like uh, Ocean it's Twelve. Cool. It's not Ocean Twelve, is it? Like they didn't. It's like... not the fact that he just did a high a plane jacking, although it was the first and biggest um, hijacking of any aviation vehicle. Oh, okay, that's at interesting. The time. That's a good. Fact. Um, but the fact that he just disappeared and has never been seen since. I imagine this would have been like global. Not global, national news in the US at the so, time, and yeah. back then you only had like a few streams of. Okay, like yeah. j- just for curiosity, where news. he jumps, if the parachute didn't open, would have he landed in some kind of water and just washed away? He would have been found because they searched. Jumped, right? They searched the entire flight path. They found nothing. They found no parachute. Um, no body. So maybe there's a big gun. Because you said it was quite windy that day and there mm. was a storm. So he could have blown it off was, course. It uh, was rain, 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 rain. R- of raining and he could have gone off course and he m- he might have just fallen somewhere, died with the bag <laughs> of money, just, just, just there. And no one's ever found him. Out of the suspects, who are you going for? You go for the first one, McCoy. Yeah, it's the who first knows? one. He did the exact same thing. I think it's the actor later. in Prison Break. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, the well, only the, reason why I think it's McCoy because I think that's where the saying came from. Real McCoy. No funny stuff. No, the real McCoy. Oh. What no funny stuff? Okay. So you don't believe he <laughs> no, was having... I, 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 even, but even apparently his knows, dinner I'm that sure he was having with his family was in a different state. wouldn't have released all the information to the press about the notes and everything, right? So someone does the exact same crime the exact same way when no one knows all the information it has to be him yeah but then why if, if he was already in prison why wouldn't he just admit oh yeah the other one was me as well because would on. you want to do more time yeah, yeah. he escaped yeah. anyway he was already probably planning plotting yes yeah, so he hadn't escaped yet and if he didn't escape i wouldn't want to get another oh 20 years oh my gosh this they based prison break on mccoy because he broke out of the prison and then he ended up dying in prison break. How did he die in prison break? Through a gunfight? Es- escaping through the prison. Like he never made it fight. out of prison. Oh. In prison break. <laughs> I found fa- that, that actor's what deceased, if? which is sad. The, the, he got four parachutes, right? Yeah. And his whole time, it was a pilot that was in on this. <gasps> and oh! the pilot chucks one bag of money out with one parachute, and then he kicks him out some other time. And then... He just gets someone to go and retrieve the bag from somewhere. And then it's the pilot the whole time. And he's just <gasps> chilling with 200. And everyone's <sighs> everyone's looking for this DB Cooper. Oh, but this person even isn't been, even... He's, he's, he's the, the stewardess. Yeah, the stewardess. Yeah. She just yeah. Yeah. Stewardess. Someone on it. She's like, oh yeah, he looked like this and this. and oh, yeah, Yes. <sighs> DB Cooper is actually Danielle. <laughs> Deborah and Barbara Cooper. <laughs> and she just drew a random picture and she's like oh yeah that looks like him oh yeah that looks a bit like him too she's never like too sure and she's in a hotel going Wah. so you know how like so you don't um, believe Dwayne Webber saying I'm Dan Cooper no I don't believe him no no what no. about you know Kenneth how... Christiansen no no anyone who said that Dan Cooper either had Alzheimer's or wanted to fuck with someone before they die hmm <laughs> you know how like it's it's easy to look at things today and go like oh like you know i wish i was i wish i was back in like the same age i am now in knowledge but in like the 90s when the dot com bubble you know i could have taken advantage of that or you know like things Hindsight. would have been a bit easier but then yeah. do, you, do you think criminals ever look back and go do you know how much easier it have been to get I away with crimes it. like 50 years <laughs> Because like, this, yeah, like yeah. this whole thing, he buys an airline ticket. That would have been the end of your crime today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've been photographed no. 5,000 times before you got onto the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Passport, your name, your ID. Like every, that could have got I mean, so Richard, many different ones. Co- Richard McCoy does look And, and getting a bomb similar. on the plane. You can't get deodorant on a plane these days. <laughs> I can't even take my coconut or, oil on. I have the driest skin when I get to the other side. Oh, oh, yeah, or toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want a detailed overview of DB Cooper, just watch Prison Break Season 1. I'm going to rewatch nah. that. I think I'm going to rewatch it. Just, as, I'm, just for that. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue with my life trend of not watching Prison Break. It's so good. <laughs> the B-side word. 
I'm gonna, Melody loves it, so I'm going to share this story with her. I wonder if she knows about it. 